Hi everybody. So uh, today I'll be presenting uh, porting Rotor Magnet to 3DS. Uh, I have a question to any of you guys. Have you guys ever uh, worked on the PlayStation 2? Anybody here? No? You? Yes? Oh wow, okay. <laughs> then you will understand the problems that I'm going to be facing. Any okay, let's bring in a level up. iPhone, iPhone 3. Anybody touch that? Like the first iPhone? Yeah, you people. <laughs> well, I'm just gonna say to the rest of the people who haven't like touched anything from ten years ago to brace yourselves because uh, it's uh, it's a lot of work. So without further delay, I'll start. So so yeah, I'm just gonna give like a sh very short introduction. So I'll just tell you what about this project about uh, and uh, you know, when did I start it and all that stuff and. Uh, also, yeah, I'll be talking about uh, Roto Mobile for Nintendo 3DS, and then the last part is really the goodies of you know about uh, developing on the Unity for Nintendo 3DS. So next slide, jeez, there you go. <laughs> so just to let you know, uh, I've been working in this industry since uh, 2004. I started doing uh, mobile games on uh, Java 2 Mobile. So before the iPhone, uh, the mobile industry was like all about flip phones and uh, screens are like, uh, like I'd say QVGA, 320 by 240 pixels or below. So, uh, and memory is like, I mean, games had to fit in either 64K, 128K, 256K or maximum one megabyte. So you could see on the left, that's like one of the games I've worked on. So gone fishing and uh, blob dashes are I'd say uh, more recent release but that was like in 2008 uh, when the first iPhone came out so yeah and uh, uh, only after that only after these two games got developed I got my bachelor's in Concordia and then I worked for a couple of companies uh, such as Beam Me Up, uh, Logicus, for Enix and etc cetera, etc cetera. So yeah, uh, so moving forward, yeah. So uh, why so why Nintendo 3DS? Well, uh, as you can see, uh, it's a very 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 big market. You have almost around 80 million uh, installs uh, around the world, and uh, yeah, that includes the original 3DS, uh, the 2DS, which is like targeted for like uh, small children, you know. Uh, because normally 3D, uh, normally you wouldn't let you wouldn't let little kids under seven like play uh, with uh, the 3D functionality. So they made a special 3DS for just that market. And then you have the new 3DS, which is 8.81 million units. So that's a pretty big market. And yeah, the other thing is uh, there's only around 15 games that comes out like per month. So imagine that compared to the Apple Store or even Steam. You know, that's like. That's nothing, you know. Uh, <laughs> so there's a very big opportunity to actually uh, develop for this platform, and also, um, yeah, for technical reasons, uh, this is also the lowest common denominator of all the Unity platforms being supported. So besides, like I say, the second one, or probably we would be the, the Wii U uh, for this generation that's like available. But yeah, the 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 most lowest is the Nintendo 3DS. And yes, and there is still a large, uh, a large lineup of third-party games. Third-party and first-party. I didn't list. I think there's one. Yeah, Fire Emblem is a first-party, but the rest are all like third-party games. So you have Dragon Quest. Uh, you have uh, Yokai Watch Three, which is uh, came out already in Japan, but I think it's gonna come out like next year uh, in the States or America. And then you have uh, a new Layton game. I don't know if anybody knows about Professor Layton. You know, it's a very big franchise. And uh, yeah, they're coming out with uh, Lady Layton, which is like uh, the newest uh, Layton game in the series. So yeah, uh, so moving forward. So yeah, so just to give like a comparison between the two models, uh, the 2D, the 3DS, and 2DS has like. Uh, obviously has like less uh, horsepower than the new one so the old one has like two cores versus the new one has like four and that really makes a big difference like uh, especially for running unity for running like all the stuff that you need like the physics the colliders uh, even the UI which I'll get 
to a point later to talk about it, but uh, uh, you have to keep in mind that, yeah, this, this is like, I would say one third of the horsepower. Uh, you also have, yeah, uh, 64 megabytes of RAM compared to the new one, which is double. So that's also gonna be a big issue when you're, let's say if you're targeting for the original, because uh, you're not gonna have that much space uh, once uh, Unity gets loaded, which I'll get later. Uh, the GPU is the same. Uh, the video RAM is actually, they're both identically the same. So uh, those, you know, uh, yeah, the, you know, they're, they're, they're very small, like compared to probably, uh, this is why I say if you guys develop for the iPhone 3, uh, this might sound very, like very familiar sizes because uh, uh, of course people in the new generation, I, I guess most indies I meet, uh, they're not used to seeing six megabytes of video around or like having like a gigabyte and like, whoa, you know, six is like, this is really tiny. So yeah, uh, which I also explained some tricks on how to deal with that. But uh, and uh, yeah, you have the input. Uh, the original one has like the analog stick, the D-pad, uh, the shoulder fire buttons, L and R. Uh, the new one has a lot more stuff inside. So you have an extra analog stick uh, on the right hand. Uh, you also have, uh, I believe, uh, extra shoulder fire uh, left and right. And as well, you also have a RFID tag reader. So Amiibo, if you're ever developing for like, uh, you know, the Amiibo figurines, uh, that's what you're gonna use. And the screen, um, same resolution, both both of them. Uh, only thing is that uh, I think they, in the new 3DS, they raised the pixel per inch. So they're a lot larger, like, the same 400 by 240 display, but it's like bigger. Uh, and uh, yeah, so let's move on to the next thing. There you go. So so about my game, uh, Roto Magnus. So it started since 2009, uh, originally for the iPhone 3G. It's developed by one of my friends who work at Behavior, and I'm actually helping him work. I'm helping him bring the game to the market. So, so yeah, it's actually this is what it's the mock-up or it's say like the what the I wouldn't say the final product would look like, but this is like a concept. But before that, it was way simpler than this. It was just a bunch of circles, of colors, and whatnot. You know, that, <laughs> that's it. So, uh, if people were wondering why it taking took so long to do this, because I had to do my university. So. <laughs> Uh, so then later I ported it to the iPhone 4 uh, and then it was only like last year of March I started porting into the 3DS because uh, uh, Unity uh, officially released like the first uh, release of uh, Unity for Nintendo 3DS. Prior to that it was a invite uh, closed beta so you had to sign up in order to you know get to, to use their, their tech and uh, yeah and uh, uh, been working up since now. Yeah, there's a bit of a delay. <laughs> okay, so what do you have to consider when you're working in Unity? Uh, right now, uh, this it's a really specific flavor of Unity. It's only version 4.57. So I guess a lot of the a lot of the newer features that uh, you expect in version five is probably not not going to come. It's only gonna come much later, so expect that like to be I don't know maybe next year or maybe within I guess maybe within this year, but for now you'll be working with a very limited version of Unity, which is yeah only version four point four point five, and uh, yeah uh, also keep in mind when you're developing for the original 3DS is that uh, you only have uh, I mean sixty two percent will be consumed by uh, the game engine and uh, the operating system. So you're only left with a measly, I guess, uh, 38%. <laughs> so that includes like all the, the data, uh, uh, even your vertex data is gonna be loaded into main memory. So yeah, uh, but uh, this is separate from, uh, from uh, video memory. So if you load textures, it wouldn't be loaded into this portion of memory, but but yeah, uh, just keep in mind, this is just for the original that you have to, you only have like one third of the memory at your disposal. Uh, next, yes. And uh, yeah, there's no fancy pixel shader, uh, uh, pixel shaders uh, in uh, the original 3DS. It's all fixed function. 
So you can't program like uh, you know like what you normally do with uh, say an iPhone, you know. So, uh, so the only thing you have, I believe, is like the geometry. Uh, yeah, the geometry shader and uh, I, I forgot because I don't really use that much that fun that functionality. But uh, but yeah, you're quite limited in terms of uh, that kind of functionality. Uh, so, and uh, yes, uh, if you want the 60 frames per second experience on the original, I'm saying that on the original, you have, you almost, it's almost like a complete rewrite of uh, your project, you know, it's uh, rewriting functionality. So, uh, which one I'll get to a moment of it, but uh, yeah. So like things like physics, collisions, UI, uh, yeah, I expect that you're going to throw a lot away out, you know, if you have a project that uses a lot of this stuff, you're going to have to simplify it. <laughs> So yeah, uh, so here's one of the cases uh, which uh, was causing a lot of problems. It was just, in our game, there was like, it's a side scroller, so uh, you had like enemies coming from the right to the left, and there were, as you can see, yeah, as you can see here on the left, uh, there's this group of balls, and you had to match whatever that was coming from the right. And, um, and yeah, uh, in the original game, you had all these colliders, I, I think you've noticed, you could see there is like, uh, there's like at least maybe two or three overlapping for each enemy that's coming in. So we had a level that was like, had like about, I guess say 30 or 40 and that already, on the original 3DS it was running at like 10 or 15 frames per second. So, so that had to be taken out. So what I had to do is uh, literally only test collisions within what's in, what's displayed on the screen. Uh, yeah, what's actually only what I needed. So essentially, what it was displayed on the screen. Uh, also, also the collisions had to be batched, and uh, I don't. I'm not too sure too much what's uh, under the hood in Unity, but uh, maybe somebody could ex help me with this. But uh, uh, from what I know, you can't really batch like the. I, I, I'm guessing they don't really batch like each collider being tested. So each one has to have go through a function overhead. So that takes a lot of CPU. So the solution to that was essentially to code my own uh, collision system, which was just testing two integers since it was just colliding with uh, two spheres and uh, putting it into one update function. And essentially just iterating through that and that you get like a, an incredible boost of 70% performance, just just that, you know? So yeah, so just keep in mind that uh, if you try to use their system, unless you're making like a golf game or something, or something that doesn't really rely on frame rate that much, I strongly discourage like using uh, the collider system in your, the built-in one. Even if you set up the matrix properly, it's insanely slow. Next. Yeah, so for the UI, uh, I had to make my own UI. So essentially, um, I mean, I had to make my own UI library. So essentially, it was pretty much billboards all placed on the front of the edge of the screen. So there wasn't, uh, I mean, you could use Yugui, but it's like, if you use it, you're going to lose like about 80% of your performance just trying to use that. And uh, yeah, and if you want to get like the best performance, like it's better to have billboards in front of uh, you know in front of the camera, in front of the the, the, the near plane. Um, so yeah, uh, let's see what I say here. Uh, yeah, also um, also what's another good thing if you want like to animate elements of your UI, it's better to use UV to animate the UVs to transform the UVs or transform uh, the vertices on your on your mesh because that doesn't take that much overhead compared to trying to uh, update a buffer, uh, uh, an off-screen buffer, uh, a texture uh, in in CPU, and then re-updating it back into the the, the VRAM. So. So this is case two. Uh, of course, there's many other cases, but I won't list them all. So one of the best the best practices I'm listing here is that uh, 
don't uh, instantiate your instantiate game objects. Don't use, yeah, don't use instantiate. Just don't touch that at all. Like uh, before, my my project had plenty of like uh, instantiation calls, and that really, for some reason in Unity, it permanently damages your your performance. Like until you actually release the object. So so instead, uh, what's best is to actually already have your game objects already present in the scene and if you need to load something dynamically just attach the script to it uh, or load the texture or whatever but uh, never never ever use instantiate to load like a prefab or anything like that because that's just gonna kill like your 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 your, your frame rate uh, yeah and also pull all your objects together so in other words don't destroy your object just recycle them so if they get deleted just Put them off screen, and if you need them back, just put it back in front. You know. <laughs> uh, next, yes. Uh, set active and uh, yeah, uh, trying to make objects uh, invisible. Try not to use set active because that also also is a big penalizer in frame rate. Um, the next one is uh, not about performance, but more like. Um, the problem of uh, memory leaking so if you say create uh, data structures with lists or uh, yeah with dynamic lists uh, just be warned that uh, if you try to erase the list and you call the garbage collector it won't collect you, the memory monitor will show you that there's still memory consumed despite even uh, the fact that you try to dereference the object so watch out for that. Uh, things that are okay, uh, I don't know if you guys know about attaching strings with the plus sign. That's absolutely okay. I know it's like strongly discarded, but that one, for some good reason, it works pretty damn well. <laughs> so, so you don't need to do string builder. You know, you could use the, the plus sign. Uh, fixed arrays, strongly recommend to use fixed arrays. Uh, images and uh, mesh data, uh, that's also okay as well. Those could be uh, dereferenced and disposed of. So, uh, and yeah, you could call GC and it'll collect it for you that, with no problem. But just keep in mind that, yeah, if you try to create like dynamic d data structures, like uh, you wouldn't be able to use them the way you would like to use them. So it's almost like C programming. I'm sure people did that before you go, it's old C. All right. See the next thing. Yeah, so this is the real numbers. Maybe you guys want to take note of this. Uh, so uh, I've been measuring on the, the hardware. So on the original, if you really want to reach the 60 frames per second uh, frame rate, yeah, you can't draw more than 30 calls. So uh, you either batch a lot or you, know, uh, you just don't draw a lot of items on the screen. So if you have a lot of moving objects, uh, this could po potentially cause a problem. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, it really depends on the kind of game that you want to make. Um, I think a very good example of a game that I think suffers from this, uh, I don't know if anybody played the uh, Hyrule Warriors on Nintendo 3DS. No, no. Dynasty Warriors, I'm sure you guys know Dynasty Warriors. Yeah, it's, it's just a derivative of Dynasty Warriors. But anyways, I have like 10 or 15 characters skin meshes in there. Oh yeah, the, the, another thing, I don't encourage using skin meshes because that also is painfully slow. <laughs> so, so yeah, uh, in that game, they had a lot of characters and literally, literally it was running only at 20 FPS on the original 3DS because the bandwidth on this is not that amazing on the newer one uh it's more reasonable but uh yeah like again it's almost like the iphone 3g you know you're you're pretty much limited in what how many calls you have so uh so really keep that in mind uh yeah and i also recommend to uh to batch stuff that are not moving stuff that like stuff that doesn't need to move just batch it like if you can batch it and you could spare the memory batch it like just an example um, in my game the balls in the middle uh they all rotate together so so what i did is every time it actually attaches itself it just batches automatically into it and then yeah it keeps and that way it keeps the frame rate high but yet you lose your memory you lose i guess you lose like uh i guess uh quite a lot of bytes in memory every time when you try to use, do that so it's, it's a bit a bit of a balance between memory and cpu so yeah uh, yeah, and uh, if you, 
uh, batching update blocks. Uh, so say, uh, for example, if you're moving uh, a lot of, uh, like for example, in my game, I had to move uh, a lot of these enemies from the right to the left. Uh, so technically they had to be tr transformed every, at every frame. So uh, what was it? What was before was actually each each enemy had its own script for updating its position, but that was just too inefficient and had like too much overhead. So instead, I batch it into uh, one script, one update block, and through a for loop, and it just iterates and uh, like I said, it saved me so it gave me a 70 70 percent performance boost. Um, the last thing, I don't know if you guys any you guys are aware about uh, Unity, but uh, uh, I'm sure you guys use prefabs a lot, and uh, I don't know if you guys, you, I'm assuming you guys update them, uh, your prefabs a lot. Do you guys save your prefabs? Like, do you save them? Because uh, uh, just to know, let you know that if you change a texture in uh, an instance, but uh, you know you haven't updated the prefab. Uh, both textures will actually be loaded. So you might have, what I'm saying here is that you might have textures that you're unaware that you, you have in your, in your project that you haven't disposed of or you haven't like removed. So just keep in mind that there's great tools for, uh, for tracking like uh, textures that are literally uh, off screen or not even used. Like I think, uh, I think on the there is something free called Texture Overview, and uh, uh, it could list out all the, the 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 links to all your prefabs and your textures together. So you could literally keep track of all your textures. But uh, yeah, um, uh, I think a lot of developers uh, fumble on this, and they wonder why it doesn't their game doesn't boot and they run out of memory. And this is one of the reasons. <laughs> uh, so all right, so I'll go next. Yes, uh, so this is more for the artists, uh, uh, suggestions for the artists, but uh, and probably drive some artists nuts when they see this, but uh, uh, yeah, uh, you really have to tile your textures, like literally, like, you know, uh, take a block of texture and then like uh, paint it on a polygon, but you have to reuse a lot. So a lot of these old games they reuse, they tile all of their, their textures. So as you see here, like, uh, you can see the atlas, the, the the grass. They repeat the same one over and over again. Uh, yeah. Um, so, so if you want to try to represent a shape uh, in your in your game, try to use as much as possible like vertices on your mesh and not like textures because. Uh, there's a limit. Well, I mean, you have to pretty much balance out, but yeah, it's somehow sometimes it's better to represent shapes through uh, vertices, uh, almost like vector art. Yeah, through meshes than through a texture. So uh, yeah, and uh, also another thing, maybe you guys are. I'm sure you guys are aware. Maybe you guys are not aware, but uh, bitmaps are enabled on default uh, every time when you try to uh, import an asset into Unity. So and that consumes extra memory, mostly most of the time for nothing, you know. Uh, but uh, in our case, we try to disable the mid apps altogether because uh, because yeah, it's uh, extra memory for nothing. So moving on. So it, so this is the last slide. So so really, it really depends on all all of your needs. Like depending on what kind of game you want to make. So. If you're making a golf game, I'd say you could use a lot of this stuff in Unity, and I didn't think you wouldn't really have a problem. But if you're trying to make, I don't know, say a Dynasty Warriors game, then you're in trouble, you know. Uh, uh, but uh, in terms of performance, or about this, it's really uh, almost this, it's nearly the same as working in native. So you get pretty much the same advantages of, of native development, except uh, maybe the memory. Uh, that's where you lose the most. But uh, if you know, if you ever wonder if, if whether to trade off writing the, the, the engine in C or to write to use Unity, I'd say if you have a small project and you don't need that much memory, you do need to do this best. So yeah. Uh, so is there any questions? Uh, yeah. Do you think how uh, like support Unity in terms of the 3DS? 
have you ever run into issues that like you're like you know for a long time you just need to be fixed and you have to work your way through that? A lot of uh, there's quite a lot of stuff uh, yeah. that was like. Well, I would say when I wouldn't say they're known because they don't really, I guess, list their, their problems. But uh, I mean, this was the whole year from March yeah. was just discovering all this crap list of problem, and I started realizing that at that point, my God, I'm like literally rewriting the engine. <laughs> <laughs> Any other question? Yeah, but yes, no. Well, it was an Xcode project I ported to Unity, but it was yeah. It's then I was still doing it for iPhone. It just was dumping Xcode project, so that's it, you know. Yeah. But uh, I saw I certainly discover even if I got it working for the iPhone, which is like the four was just the slowest device. Apparently, it's not the slowest device. This is really the slowest, the king of the slowest devices out there. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Else? Thank you very much. <laughs>